yeah. Or it, it's the equivalent of like buying a, a sports car. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm making up for other inadequacies. So this is your midlife crisis table. Yeah, it's right okay. there, right there on the table. Got it. Awesome. So how excited were you to actually come back after all after all that kind of you know time, time apart? You know, with the recasting and everything. Uh, to come back and do season two, yeah. that was a relief. You know, a lot of us were, were unsure whether you know they could replace Andy Whitfield. Right. Um, but the, you know, um, you know, without putting the emotional side into it, the show had to go on, and uh, you know, luckily it did. And uh, you know, they've recast somebody who's uh, you know, I'm very excited about what Liam's doing. You know, I, I I tell you honestly that when I came into the second series. With thinking, oh, what's this new guy going to be like? You right. know, I was, I was, uh, I started reading the scripts and I was going, oh, my, the scripts are great. And then I started looking at Liam and and we and I, he and I just started working on the same levels that, that I was working with, with Andy on. You know, he's a different, a different take. He's got his own take on Spartacus, but he's he's just wonderful. He's, he's going to do a good job for for Ross and for the fans. Yeah. Can you talk a little about like Quick's journey now? You know, now that he's kind of broken out, and he's kind of you know, creating new Spartacus, not getting along. Can you talk a little bit? Well, no, I, I I wouldn't jump to that conclusion. Well, a little bit. You know, we've we've. <laughs> You know, I, I tapped a shield and said, okay, yeah. mate, <laughs> yeah. I don't want to die right now, so jump up there and yeah. let's, let's but now that you're out together. To yeah, yeah now, now that we're all out and there's, right. there's a, a, of course, there's, there's a consolidation going right. on, but, um, but there's still a question of leadership. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's still the question of uh, different nationalities, you know. I mean, uh, you know, we've, we've Agron, you know, is... is German, right. Germanic, you know, uh, Croatian, you know, right. Spartacus, a Gaul, you know, we're, we're, we're different groups of, of thought, you know, suddenly free and wondering whether who says what is what each party wants to do. Right. So that's there's immediate conflict in that, you know, it's, it's not this sudden, we're, we're not all there going, like, oh, we're free, we're free. Yeah, yeah. I was you thinking know, that, I thought I mean, that was, was going to take some time. <laughs> I mean, and, and we're surra- I mean, we're in the enemy country. Right. We're, we're right in the middle, you know. It's, it's, it's like a, it's like a, a Frenchman, a, 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 a Brit, and an American in a prisoner of war camp, and they they jump right. the gate and they're in the, in the bush going like, now what? <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's go to the bus. Oh no, let's go. To, you know, and they're right. like, oh, oh, you know, <laughs> you know, it's a. Um, yeah. Lucy said, as far as the priest is concerned, you better watch your business. Well, you know, I mean, it's obvious Lucy's uh, character has, has, has survived, and, and yeah, yeah, there's, there's obvious going to be a lot of. Uh, I mean, the, 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 the season's called Vengeance. So, you know, for the whole season to be called that, you can imagine that there's going to be a lot of, uh, a lot of rep- retribution for things that have taken place or that will take place in this season as well. So, uh, so yeah, yeah, you know, um, yeah, well, I, I stabbed her in the stomach and killed a baby. Yeah. <laughs> she's she's going to she's gonna want to get me back for that, for sure. You know, uh, and we'll, we'll, we'll see how that fleshes out. You know? <laughs> mm. Was it fun to step back in the prequel and uh, fill in the blanks on Lucy's backstory? You know, it was such a, a, a risk that almost didn't get picked up by stars. You know, everyone was very tentative about whether the show could go on. And um, and then when they came up with the prequel, you know, it was a... Uh, really, they just, you know, Steve, Steve and I had, had some flashbacks that he was going to show as the season progressed right. in, in places. And all of a sudden they decided, well, let, what if we just take all that and put it all together and make, make those six episodes out of it? I, I, I mean, it, it, to me, it humanized everybody. I mean, even Batty Artis. Yeah. I mean, he was the prequel and he was a persecuted son. Yeah. You know, Crixus, who was, you know, as arrogant and, and, and warlike as, you know, was this soft, vulnerable, unsure character with long hair and no muscles, you know. And, and you know, uh, Animaeus was... Uh, could he could he be a doctor? Ray? Right. You know, did he have the the ability to rule men? You know, uh, it was it was wonderful way to flesh it out. You know, and I, I think you know as far as I've ever sort of gauged what fans like about this show is they like the heart of the show. They like the heart of the characters. You know, I, I, I think every, every character, whether they're villains or, 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 or good guys, you know, they've, they've equally got the other part of the shadow or the light in their characters. And it's very human. I think this is very human, you know. It was kind of a genius move, I think, on Star's part, too, to kind of, you know, fill in in some of those blanks, you know, and kind of to go back. 
Yeah, absolutely. Well, I, I know now that the fans are even more invested in our characters as we go into yeah. season two. You know, they know a lot more about us, you know, and it gives the writers a lot more to be able to use as well because they've got that platform of, the, of the, the fans' knowledge to enrich the experience from both both seasons. Yeah. So now that this is your third go around, has the training become any easier for you? Uh, I know it's pretty intense and everything. Well, you know, um, I, I went very hard in season one to be, you know, a machine, and then I reverted to just totally losing that discipline and, and losing weight uh, to play, you know, season uh, the prequel, yeah. uh, Crixus arriving as a slave, you know. Um, it was, you know, a, a very big, I mean, it was eight kilos I lost, got the long hair, played the character completely differently, sort of had to accelerate through episode five and six to sort of bring him to that kind of guy that had, you know, some menace. So I started him off very vulnerable and there wasn't much opportunity in episode five or six to make him a menace, but I sort of, I, I started drawing upon Gannicus, like, you know, why, why didn't he fight me properly, you know, right. you know, you know, I want a real chance of being champion, you know, and then when you jump into season one, if you play it chronologically, then he's there and he's like, I am the champion, he's quite hard and kind of like all the emotions gone, all the, you know, but then Navia starts fleshing that out. I think season two starts sort of bridging both characters. You know, I, I mean, I've, I'm, I'm sort of committed to looking for newness in the character all the time, you know, forward motion, development, so, you know, I, I think just as an actor I want that, I think the audience will appreciate it more if I can find gear changes that are engaging, that, that you know, humanise you even more, give you more experience, I mean, whether you're going toward becoming a better character or becoming a, a more flawed character, I think for the audience to be in touch with how that works on an emotional level, I think it's really important for me to to realise that myself as an actor is what the challenge is and how to do that, you know, in a way that really proves effective. So people go, oh my God, is that what happened? Or, oh, look at him with that girl. It's like that rough arsehole and now he's <laughs> kissing her and it's, you know, it's, it's, it's you know, it's, I think there's magic in, 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 in the writing, uh, you know, that, uh, that has enabled us to sort of really flesh our characters out beautifully, you know. I mean, it's, 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 a, it's a good sort of uh, relationship we have with the writers, but, you know, and they trust us as actors as well, you know, we add our little bits. You know, last night I was sitting at dinner with Stephen tonight and I said, you know what, I, I'd like to think about this next scene doing it like this rather than just the way it's, it's written. Yeah. And he was like, Mano, I love what you bring to the character, you know, always. You know? So I was like, great, okay, that's good, you know. It's not always like that. <laughs> <laughs> With Andy's uh, change and the new, you know, the, doing the slave revolt now and all that stuff, mm -hmm. audiences sort of want to know what will be the same. Uh, you know, all of a sudden it's changed. What, what can they expect to come back? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Wow. You know, no, I, 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 I think the thing about our show is that nothing stays the same. You know, I, there's no sameness. You know, you, you, I, I mean, I do the show, and whenever I read a script, I go, I, I find it hard to get my head around it because there's, there's always such a twist at the end. Somebody dies or something happens, and you're like, and, but then in a way, you, you like to go, oh, yeah, of course. Um, you know, I mean, I haven't read a blog site yet where they're actually pitching what they think's going to happen. Right. But, you know, if you really sat down, you had to think about it. You could, you could think about where the writers are going, you know. It's, 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 it's sort of predictable, but it, it never is, you know. It always happens, and you go like, oh, wow, that's, that's insane. So, you know, um, the consistency that's been going on with our show is that, you know, things like our and my production side, the, the camera department, um, the special effects department, have just upped the game. You know, you'll see in the trailer that, that they'll show uh, today, this evening, you'll see some, you'll see a shot, an aerial shot of a landscape that'll blow you away. You know, and, and that's something we've never had in the show. And I think the biggest challenge about this season was to take it out into the, to the real world. You know, I mean, we shot the whole first season inside of Ludus. We had, we had a set stage that we just circulated around and filmed the whole series there. And then we had one street somewhere that they go and buy slaves in. Right. And then they come back. There was no world. Now we're out in the world. And there's a shot in the, uh, 
There's a shot in the trailer of the mines, and you could nice. swear you could swear you could swear you're in the diamond mines in South Africa, like from an aerial view. And then you go down into them, and there's people coming down ladders. It's, it's fascinating. Okay, We're going to take. Now.